Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Podcast. Today is Wednesday, April 24th, 2019. Today I'm going to recap last night's Stanley Cup playoff actions, look ahead to tonight's Game 7, NBA playoffs, look ahead to tonight's two games, go over yesterday's baseball games, look ahead to today's, my latest NFL mock draft, and my best bet of the day. First, we'll start with the Stanley Cup playoffs, where we had two Game 7s. One was a dud, the other was a classic. The Bruins defeat the Maple Leafs 5-1 to one as they advance to take on the Columbus Blue Jackets. And Toronto, disappointing finish to their season. They're up 3-2 in the series. They're just outplayed these last two games. Freddie Anderson did not live up to expectations, and the loss of Nazem Kadri ultimately came back to haunt this team. First period, the first goal of the game, scored by Joaquin Nordstrom, puts the Bruins up 1-0. 2-0 Bruins, Marcus Johansson, his first of the playoffs, 2-0 Bruins. Second period, John Tavares, his second of the playoffs, makes it a 2-1 game. Third period, Bruins start to pull away. A goal scored by Sean Curley to put the Bruins up 3-1. to one. Then two empty net goals. One by Charlie Coyle, his third of the playoffs, to make it 4-1. And one by Patrice Bergeron, his third of the playoffs, to make it 5-1. And that's it. Lights out Toronto. Boston moves on to play Columbus. The Sharks defeat the Golden Knights 5-4 to in overtime in an absolute classic of a game. Vegas gets off to a 3 0 league. San Jose comes back and takes the lead. Vegas ties it with less than a minute to go with their goalie pull. Then in overtime, San Jose wins it, and now they move on to take on the Colorado Avalanche in the second round. First period, first goal of the game, William Carlson, his second of the playoffs, 1-0 Golden Knights. Second period, Cody Egan, second of the playoffs, 2-0 Golden Knights. Third period, Max Pacioretty's fifth of the playoffs, 3 nothing. You think the game's over. Not so fast. Logan Couture on the power play is fifth of the playoffs, makes it a 3-1 game. Thomas Hurdle, sixth of the playoffs on the power play, it's a 3-2 game. Logan Couture's sixth of the playoffs on the power play, ties up at three apiece. Less than a minute later, Kevin LeBlanc's second of the playoffs on a power play, 4-3 Sharks. Jonathan Marshall ties it at four apiece, his fourth of the playoffs. Then in overtime, the game winner... The series winner in Game 7 to send San Jose to the second round. Brandon Goodrow, which, I'm sorry, Barkley Goodrow. That was just a phenomenal game, and now San Jose moves on to take on Colorado. Tonight you have the Hurricanes and the Capitals, 7.30 NBC, SM, Kenny Albert, Eddie Olchek, Pierre Maguire on the call. This should be a good one. Obviously Carolina, this is an opportunity for them to steal the series from Washington, who is missing TJ Oshie. The home team has won every game in this series so far. Does that trend continue? Yes, I think the Capitals win by a score of 4-2 to two with that last goal being an empty netter, I think will be competitive. I think Ron Bindemore's done a great job with Carolina this year, but they are inferior to the Capitals, regardless of TJ Oshie's status. So give me the Caps to move on to take on the New York Islanders and their former head coach, Barry Trotz. NBA, four playoff games last night. Three blowouts in the Classic. Raptors over to Magic 115-96 to win in advance. DJ Augustine, who single-handedly won Orlando Game 1 at 15 for them. Evan Fournier at 10. Aaron Gordon at 11. And off the bench, Wesley Awundu had 12. And Tyson Ross had 12. I'm sorry, Terrence Ross. Toronto, Pesolski Akum had 24. Kawhi at 27, Kyle Lowry at 14. Off the bench, Norman Powell had 11, and Serge Ibaka had 10. 
And their opponent, the Philadelphia 76ers, who closed out their series against the Nets 122-100. They got off to a really fast start in this game. I believe this was like a 30-3 game at one point. They outscored them in the first quarter 32-15. So Philly put it away early. Joel Embiid was the best player on the court, 23 points and 13 boards. Tobias Harris had 12. Ben Simmons had 13 with 5 boards and 6 assists. J.J. Redick had 11 off the bench. James Ennis had 11. Jonathan Simmons had 10. And now they take on the Toronto Raptors. And meanwhile, for Brooklyn, Rondé Hollis Jefferson actually led them in scoring with 21 off the bench. Rodion's Caruso's had 14. Shabazz Napier had 11. Karis LeVert had 18. D'Angelo Russell only had 8. The Nuggets defeat the Spurs 108-90 to go up 3-2 in that series. So they hold serve on... Home court, Jamal Murray, 23 points to lead the way for Denver. Gary Harris had 15. Nikola Jokic had 16 and 11 with 8 assists. Paul Millsap had 11 off the bench. Will Barton had 17. Malik Beasley had 11. And Monte Morris had 10. So Barton coming off the bench. And they decide to start Tory Craig. Meanwhile, for San Antonio, DeMar DeRozan and LaMarcus Aldridge had 17. Jakob Pertl and Derek White each had 12. Their bench didn't do anything. And the absolute classic, the best game of the playoffs so far. Trailblazers over the Thunder, 118-115 to close out that series. What a phenomenal series win for the Blazers. They came from behind in this one. You thought, oh, okay, so he's going to force a game six. Not so fast, my friend. Damian Lillard and company get the job done. Lillard, 50 points, including a 37-foot buzzer beater to win the series. Don't forget, he also had the buzzer beater five years ago when they knocked off James Harden and the Rockets. I talked about Willard and his 50 points. He also had seven boards and six assists, so a sensational game for him, including 10 three-pointers. CJ McCollum had 17. Dennis Kanter had 13 and 13. He's done well replacing Yersef Nurkic as the starting center. Maurice Harkless had 17. Their bench didn't even do anything, which is why they almost lost this game. Paul George had 36 and 9 boards. Russell Westbrook had 29 points, 11 boards, and 14 assists. Steven Adams had 10. Jeremy Grant had 16. And Dennis Schroeder off the bench had 17. So I'm interested to see what Oklahoma City does this offseason. Is Billy Donovan the fall guy? Do they trade any of their high-priced players? They won't trade Westbrook or George. That would shock me. Steven Adams might be the trade bait that people have been suggesting. That won't stun me. And then they can go after a more versatile big man like an Al Horford in free agency if he were to leave Boston and if Boston were to trade for Anthony Davis. We'll talk about offseason stuff more as the offseason inches closer. Doubleheader on TNT tonight at 8 o'clock. You have the Jazz at the Rockets. Houston's favored by 8.5. Houston's looking to close out Utah. Do I think they get the job done? Yes, they do. They're home. Their fans are going to be really into it, and I think James Harden's going to have a big game. So, give me the Rockets there to advance. And at 10.30 TNT, the Clippers and the Warriors. Last time the Warriors played in this building, they obviously blew the 31-point lead to the Clippers. And I think they're going to win this game going away. I won't be floored if it's a blow. 15, I think, is the right number. So, as I rarely ever do, I'm calling a push. I think the Warriors win 115 to, or I'm sorry, 120 to 105 to advance to the second round to take on the highly anticipated matchup with the Rockets. And by the way, my score prediction for that game, I'm going to say 122 to 108. I think both these games are double digit wins by the home teams tonight. Baseball. Going over last night's and yesterday's games, I talked about the Tigers-Red Sox game one of that doubleheader yesterday. Marlins-Indians, the Marlins actually won the game 3-1. to one. Miami 7-16, Cleveland's 12-10, Pablo Lopez the win 2-3, Nair Ramirez the last Sergio Romo gets his third save of the year. Reds defeat the Braves 7-6, Braves are 9-13, I'm sorry, the, Red, the Reds are 9-13, the Braves are 11-11. Robert Stevenson gets the win. He's 2-0. Kevin Gossman, the loss. He's 1-2. Rossi Del Glessius, fifth save of the year. Diamondbacks over to Pirates, 2-1. Another nice win for Arizona. 
They're 13 and 11. Pittsburgh's 12 and 9. Luke Weaver gets the win. He's 2 and 1. Trevor Williams lost. He's 1 and 1. Greg Collin gets his fifth save of the season. Orioles over to White Sox, 9 to 1. Impressive win for Baltimore. They're 9 and 16. Chicago's 9 and 13. Andrew Kashner gets the win. He's 4 and 1. Avon over the loss. He's 0 and 3. Giants over the Blue Jays, 7 to 6. San Francisco's 10 and 14. Toronto's 11 and 13. Kevin Pillar back in Toronto. Jeff Samarja gets the win. He's 2 and 1. Trent Thornton, the loss. He's 0 and 3. Will Smith gets his sixth save of the season. Tigers over to Red Sox, 4 to 2 in game 2 of that double header. Detroit's 12 and 10. Boston's 9 and 15. Steven Turnbull gets the win. He's 1 and 2. Hector Velasquez, the loss. He's 0 and 2. Shane Green gets his 11th save of the season. Rays over to Royals, 5 and 2. Rays are 16 and 8. Royals are 7 and 17. Jalen Beeks gets the win. He's 1 and 0. Homer Bailey, the loss, 2 and 2. Emilio Pagan gets his second save of the season. Mets over to Phillies, 9 0. An impressive win for the Mets. They're 13 and 10. Phillies, 12 and 11. Zach Wheeler, the win, he's 2 and 2. Zach Eflin, the loss, he's 2 and 3. Cardinals over to the Brewers, 4 to 3. Cards are 14 and 9. Milwaukee's 13 and 12. The winning pitcher for the Cardinals, Andrew Miller. He's 1-1. One one. Alex Wilson, the loss, he's 1-1. One one. Jordan Hicks gets his sixth save of the season. Cubs over to Dodgers, 7-2. It's a big win for the Cubs. They're 11-10, finally back over 500. Dodgers dropped to 15-10. Jose Catana gets the win. He's 3-1. Kenta Maeda, the loss, he's 3-2. Astros over to Twins, 10-4. A good bounce back win for the Astros. They are 14-9. Minnesota's 13-8. Hector Rendon gets the win, 2-0, and and Trevor Hildenberger the loss, 2-1. Nationals over the Rockies, 6-3. Nats 11-11, Colorado's 10-14. Patrick Corbin the win, he's 2-0. Jeff Hoffman the loss, 0-1. Sean Doolittle gets his third save of the season. Athletics over the Rangers, 11-5. Oakland, 13-13. Texas, 12-10. Frankie Montas gets the win, he's 4-1. Lance Lynn the loss, 2-2. Two Padres over the Mariners, 6-3. The Padres are 13-11 and, and Seattle, 16-10. and 10. The winning pitcher for the Padres improving the 2-2 two two is Nick Markovages. The losing pitcher dropping the 0-2 is Eric Swanson. And Kirby Yates gets his 11th save of the season. And the Yankees defeat the Angels by a score of 7-5. The, the Yankees improve the 13-10. and 10. The Angels drop the 9-15. Domingo Herman is 4 and 1. Chris Stratton 0 and 2. Zach Britton gets the save for the Yankees his first of the season. Going on right now in baseball, you have the Royals and the Rays in the bottom of the 5th. Royals up 4-1. Indians Marlins Indians up 2-1 in the top of the 6th. And the Cardinals over the Brewers 4-1 in the bottom of the 5th. Rest of the slate. 3 o'clock Nationals Rockies. You have Anibal Sanchez and Herman Marquez. 3.30 Rangers Athletics. You have Aaron Brooks going for Oakland. And for Texas, you have Kyle Dowdy. Mariners Padres at 3.40. Felix Hernandez and Chris Paddock. 4 o'clock Giants Blue Jays. Drew Pomeranz and Clay Buckles. 6.40 Braves Reds. Mike Soroka and Tanner Roark. Phillies Mets on ESPN. You have Vince Velasquez and Jason Vargas. The Phillies need this game in the worst way. Jason Vargas is, I think, is the worst starting pitcher in the league right now. He has a 9.58 ERA. He's certainly a huge liability on the Mets. I think Velasquez, on the other hand, has improved this year and finally coming into his own after that great couple weeks he had after he got traded from. Houston, the Philly, in that big Ken Giles deal, and he really looked like the ace in the making for Philly. But I think that he's finally turning a corner this year. He'll pitch a quality game for Philly, and they'll get a win by a score of, let's say, 5-3. to three. Diamondbacks, Pirates. You have Jordan Lyles for Pittsburgh and Merrill Kelly for Arizona. White Sox Orioles, Irvin Santana, and for Baltimore, John Means. Tigers, Red Sox, Tyson Ross, and Eduardo Rodriguez. 
8 o'clock, Dodgers, Cubs. Surprise, this isn't on ESPN. Walker Buehler and Cole Hamels. Twins, Astros. Cole Stewart and Justin Verlander. Stewart, obviously, uh, was once a highly touted prospect in the twin system. Never really lived up to hype. And last but not least, you have the Yankees and the Angels, CC Sabathia and Felix Pena. All right. Now we'll do my 16th edition of my NFL mock draft. I can't believe I'm at 16 already. The draft is tomorrow, so here's the deal for tomorrow. I'll have my final mock draft for you. And I'll also have my player rankings for the draft. And those two things will be on a podcast well, the player rankings and comparisons will be on a separate podcast, which may come out as soon as tonight. And my final mock draft will be on my regular podcast. Draft Bowl predictions will be on the special draft podcast. And I'm also going to have a guest or two on the podcast tonight. Russell Baxter, formerly of Bleacher Report now has his own podcast and does some other work for some other companies. He'll pop on and we'll talk about what certain teams' needs are in the draft and what their priorities should be. And maybe I'll get a prediction from him as well. And then I'll have a buddy of mine, Christian, on to go over some draft props as well as some NBA playoff props as well. Now, without further ado... My latest mock draft, my 16th edition. Number one, Arizona Cardinals. Kyler Murray, quarterback, Oklahoma. Over a month ago, I thought that the Murray to the Cardinals talk was fake news. After Steve Kime came out and said, Josh Rosen is our quarterback for now, convinced me that Murray is a near lock to go to Arizona and Josh Rosen is trade bait. There has been some reports that the Cards may pass on Murray and keep Rosen, but I think it's a smokescreen. Two, San Francisco 49ers. Nick Bosa, defensive end, Ohio State. This is the dream scenario for the Niners. Getting the best player in the draft is always a win for whomever drafts the player. Bosa would be an upgrade over any of the past rushers currently on the Niners roster, and he would have an immediate impact like Miles Garrett did a few years back with the Browns. Three, New York Jets. Quinnen Williams, defensive tackle, Alabama. There is a lot of buzz that the Jets want to trade down and select Ed Oliver, but I think... That would be a mistake to pass up on one of these premier pass rushers. Some folks think Williams is the best player in this draft, and the past few years the Jets have been lucky with great prospects falling to them, and that will be the case here. Four, Oakland Raiders. Ed Oliver, defensive tackle, Houston. Rumors are hot and heavy right now that they are leaning toward taking Oliver over Josh Allen and Devin White. Oliver is someone that was up and down in his final collegiate season, But if he lives up to the hype, this may turn out to be a solid pick after all. 5. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Devin White, inside linebacker, LSU. White is somebody that is a fast riser among defensive players in the draft. I wouldn't be shocked if Oakland picks him at 4. The Bucs have a need at the linebacker position, and White is someone that is a dynamic tackling machine and could be a future pro bowler. 6. New York Giants. Josh Allen, outside linebacker, Kentucky. Dave Gettleman does backflips as he lands a premier pass rusher in Allen instead of taking a quarterback. Allen is someone who won pretty much every top defensive player award in college this past season, and he provides versatility for a defense that needs top-end talent. 7. Jacksonville Jaguars. Jawan Taylor, offensive tackle, Florida. Taylor is someone that has risen after a strong combine performance. He is someone that excels in the run game, and that would help Leonard Fournette find holes. The Jaguars have an already solid offensive line, but the presence of Taylor would only give it more depth and make life better for Nick Foles. 8. Detroit Lions. Rashawn Gary, defensive end, Michigan. Yes, the team signed Trey Flowers in free agency, but it wouldn't be such a bad idea to double down on pass rush. Gary is someone that was solid in college but didn't live up to the number one prospect he was given in high school. If he lives up to hype... The Lions have themselves a player. 9. Buffalo Bills. Jonah Williams, offensive tackle, Alabama. 
The Bills are a team that badly needs protection for Josh Allen, and they land whom I feel is the best lineman in the draft with Williams. They can conceivably pick a defensive player or even a skill position player with this pick, but offensive line should be their top priority. 10. Denver Broncos. Devin Bush, inside linebacker, Michigan. This could all be a smokescreen and they end up taking a quarterback here. Bush is someone whose stock is rising of late, and he is a great athlete. John Elway will get some heat for passing on a quarterback again, but he gets a possible blue chipper here with Bush. 11. Cincinnati Bengals. Drew Locke, quarterback, Missouri. This could all be a smokescreen, but a lot of people are speculating that the Bengals will look at what their rival Ravens did with Joe Flacco and Lamar Jackson a year ago and try that with Andy Dalton and the possible successor. Locke is somebody that has a strong arm and could end up being the guy that new coach Zach Taylor falls for. 12. Green Bay Packers. TJ Hokinson, tight end, Iowa. Jimmy Graham isn't the same player he once was in New Orleans, so the Packers should snag the best tight end in the draft with Hokinson. He's a good blocker and has drawn comparisons to George Kittle of the 49ers. It is also possible if they take a defensive player here. 13. Miami Dolphins. Christian Wilkins, defensive tackle, Clemson. The first of three Clemson defensive linemen come off the board with Wilkins. The Dolphins have a lot of options with this pick, and addressing the pass rush here wouldn't be a bad idea. Wilkins is a pro's pro, and he will be the start of what Brian Flores wants to build in Miami. 14. Atlanta Falcons. Andre Dillard, offensive tackle, Washington State. A defensive player is very likely here, but momentum is gaining about them addressing the offensive line. With Jonah Williams and Juwan Taylor off the board, they go with the fast-rising tackle in Dillard. He's the best pass-blocking lineman in the draft and would give that unit a boost. 15. Washington Redskins. Dwayne Haskins, quarterback, Ohio State. The Redskins are doing cartwheels as Haskins falls to them at 15. A trade-up for him is likely and is being widely reported, although they could trade for Josh Rosen. Haskins is the best quarterback in the draft and he'll give the Redskins fans hope. And there's also been speculation with the Redskins surrounding a quarterback that I have slated to go a few spots coming up, which I'll get to. 16, Carolina Panthers. Brian Burns, defensive end, Florida State. Instead of addressing the offensive line, the Panthers take the talented pass rusher with Burns. He is versatile and has shown great athleticism and would be a solid replacement for Jabril Peppers. 17, New York Giants from the Cleveland Browns. Daniel Jones, quarterback, Duke. The Giants are desperate to find a long-term replacement for Eli Manning, and they take the guy with a lot of connections to the Manning family. I personally would take Haskins at either 6 or using this pick to trade off for him, but this connection is gaining momentum as well as Jones being linked to the Redskins. 18, Minnesota Vikings. Chris Lindstrom, guard, Boston College. The Vikings' perhaps only real weakness is their offensive line, and they take a fast-rising guard with Lindstrom. Kirk Cousins is under immense pressure to succeed next season, and upgrading the offensive line goes a long way in doing that. 19. Tennessee Titans. Claylin Farrell, defensive end, Clemson. The second of two Clemson players gets taken here with Farrell. The Titans have options with this pick as they decide to go with Farrell to bolster their pass rush to play him alongside Jarrell Casey. 20. Pittsburgh Steelers. Byron Murphy, cornerback, Washington. Murphy falling this far would be somewhat of a steal for the Steelers. Yes, they absolutely need a wide receiver with the departure of Antonio Brown, but this wouldn't be a bad option considering their secondary isn't great either. 21. Seattle Seahawks. Jalen Ferguson, defensive end, Louisiana Tech. After the training of Flank Clark, the Seahawks reach for a pass rusher in Ferguson. He's somebody that scouts feel have a high ceiling. He's immediately somebody that can start for Pete Carroll. 22, Baltimore Ravens. D.K. Metcalf, wide receiver, Ole Miss. Metcalf is somebody who could wind up a steal from this spot. This would be a nice weapon for Lamar Jackson, who needs a downfield threat guy to help his development. 23, Houston Texans. Dalton Risner, offensive tackle, Kansas State. The Texans had the worst offensive line in the sport a year ago, and they need all the reinforcements that they can use. Risner is somebody that can come in and start immediately for a unit that allowed a ton of sacks a season ago. 
24 Oakland Raiders from the Chicago Bears. Greedy Williams, cornerback, LSU. The Raiders land the stud here with Williams as he drops all the way to 24. He's fast and he has great length and he's someone that John Gruden would likely pair next to Gary on Conley in the secondary. 25, Philadelphia Eagles. DeAndre Baker, cornerback, Georgia. There's a lot of buzz that the Eagles are targeting a defensive back with this pick. Baker is one of the more underrated corners in the draft. He's someone that would go in the that should go in the first round. He would be a nice addition in that secondary when start for them. 26, Indianapolis Colts. Dexter Lawrence, defensive tackle, Clemson. The Colts snag one of the more underrated defensive linemen in the draft with Lawrence, who is the third Clemson defensive lineman drafted. He would be yet another great choice to go with the Colts' young core that is poised for success with Andrew Luck back and healthy. 27, Oakland Raiders from the Dallas Cowboys. Noah Fant, tight end, Iowa. The Raiders snag an offensive weapon for Derek Carr with their third first rounder in Fant, who was supplanted by teammate TJ Hokinson as the top tight end in the draft. He would come in and do a solid job replacing Jarrett Cook. 28, Los Angeles Chargers. Jerry Tillery, defensive tackle, Notre Dame. The Chargers defensive front was exposed in their playoff defeat against the Patriots and bolstering the interior would be wise. Tillery is somebody who is worth taking in the spot and would fit nice next to Joey Bosa. 29, Seattle Seahawks from the Kansas City Chiefs. Nasir Adderley, safety, Delaware. Adderley is someone whose stock rose with his good senior bowl performance. He's not even considered the best safety in the draft, but the Seahawks have a need at the position, and I can see Pete Carroll rolling the dice here. 30, Green Bay Packers from the New Orleans Saints. A.J. Brown, wide receiver, Ole Miss. The Packers continue to bolster their offense by selecting Brown to help replace the void left by Randall Cobb. Brown was always overshadowed by D.K. Metcalf in college, and now he'll get the chance to shine in the pros. 31, Los Angeles Rams. Garrett Bradbury, center, North Carolina State. Bradbury is somebody whose stock is rising rapidly and is the best center in this draft. The Rams lost John Sullivan in free agency, and Bradbury can come in and possibly start right away. 32, New England Patriots. Marquise Brown, wide receiver, Oklahoma. The Pats snagged one of Kyler Murray's former targets with Brown. The Pats are a team that needs speed within their offense, and Brown would provide that and put up stats with Tom Brady. That's it for my latest mock draft, and now my best bet of the day, brought to you by FanDuel. I lost automatically yesterday by taking the Boston Red Sox to go with a couple other teams, and hopefully... Tonight's slate provides better chance for me to redeem myself a little bit because I've missed on a bunch of best bets by overrating some of these big favorites in baseball, especially the Red Sox. We'll obviously go with the Rockets and the Warriors. That's just too obvious for me. We'll flip to... The Stanley Cup playoffs will take the Capitals and just hinge on a prayer for that one. In baseball, we'll go with the San Diego Padres. I'll roll with the Red Sox again, but I don't feel good about it. We'll go with the Astros. That's a lock. That's six teams. A shade above 6-1 to one odds, wagering a dollar with a pad of $7.09. That's it for the podcast today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping everything from Stanley Cup and NBA playoffs. Do my last mock draft. We'll talk about baseball, too. Look out for special draft podcasts. One will be me doing my draft board along with my comparisons and best fits and every team's needs and what every team has to do to earn an A grade. I'll have Russell Baxter on to talk about what teams are under pressure at the draft and what certain teams need and whatnot, and my props podcast with my buddy Christian. I hope you guys have a great day, everybody.